this opportunity. Good afternoon to all of you. My half of the job has already been done because uh, Dr. Shushrut and Dr. Aditya has already told about the importance of the proper tunnel placement uh, for the femur and the tibia itself. So, so we have evolved from the uh, transtibial to the anatomical uh, uh, positioning of the tibial and the femoral tunnel. So uh, if we see, the tunnel placement is the most important factor for the successful surgery. Why? Because it is the most common cause of the failure of the ACL surgery. If we go through this study, you can see that the 80, uh, this study have been about the, they have studied the cause of the failure of the ACL ligament and they have seen that the, in 88% of the cases, there were the non-anatomical graft placement was the reason. In the 61 per percentage of, sorry, 61 percentage of the cases, there were, uh, the graft were entirely on the intercondylar femur roof, that is the non-anatomical placement of the femur, uh, femoral tunnel, and 35 percent extended posterior to the ACL tibial placement, that is the malpositioning of the tibial tunnel. So what is the isometric concept? That is the, uh, the concept is that the full range of knee can be achieved without causing the long-term ligament deformation. Various authors have tried to define the isometric point, but the isometric cannot exist because during the range of the motion, there is no one point on the femur that maintain a fixed distance from a single point on the tibia. So elongation will always occur. In tibia, what is the ideal uh, point? What is the, if you see from the inside the joint, the tibial lemur we should fix at the 55 degree, seated on the debridement stump of the ACL, so that is, if you see, if you see, like even after the uh, completing this lecture, the most uh, important thing is you have to take the entry point at the anatomical side because the uh, every knee is different and every knee, if you see, no bony landmark and uh, bony landmarks can uh, define the exact position of the ACL, uh, ACL, uh, sorry, tibial or the femoral tunnel. Okay, so the center of the tunnel is at the 7 mm, should be at the 7 mm anterior to the PCL notch, posterior fovea, or the retroeminentia ridge, in the line with the posterior border of the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus. If you see outside, it should be like the four cent, uh, 3 to 4 centimeter away from the tibial joint line, or 2 centimeter uh, medial to the tibial tuberosity. Or one more point that uh, if you have uh, the attachment point of the hamstring, you can take 1 centimeter above to that. So isometric femoral tunnel, uh, you can achieve it by uh, the various technique, by the transtibial uh, center of the tunnel at the over the top position. Uh, the center of the tunnel should be 6 to 8 mm anterior to the true back wall, that is the extreme posterior cortex at the junction of the roof and the lateral wall of the femoral intercondylar notch. This will result in the 1 to 2 mm proximal cortical margin. But we have already shifted from the isometric point to the more anatomical point. Why? Because we, now we know that the graft plays as closely as possible to the center of the tibial and the femoral attachment of AM bundle. This will result in the least amount of strain, least change in the length of the ACL during the range of motion. So this, you will see the, in this diagram, you can see that if you go through the trans tibial tunnel, sorry, if you go through the trans tibial one, so you can see it will be more on a higher side. It will be deep. So this we called is normally as a shallow. This one is deep. This we normally call the, uh, this one part, the distal part we normally call as, as a shallow one. This is the deep one. This is the higher. This is the lower one. The anterior one will be the higher and th this one is the lower. So this is the terminology which we normally use for the placement of the femoral tunnel. So you see with the transtibial tunnel, it will be more on a uh, like deeper side and on the higher side. So that won't be an anatomical one. So a femoral tunnel position inside the anatomical footprint of the ACL will result in, uh, results in the knee kinematics closer to the intact knee than does a tunnel position located for the best graft isometry. So we know that the anatomy is more important than the isometry. Anatomical ACL better restore the anterior translational as well as the rotational stability. So we can use the clock position also. 
then the 10 o'clock position is more effectively resists the rotatory load when compared with the 11 o'clock if we are talking about the right side of the uh, right knee joint. So uh, it is uh, the 10 o'clock position more effectively resists the rotatory load when compared with the 11 o'clock position as evident by this smaller anterior tibial translation and higher in C2 forces. But the clock concept is easy to use, however it is inaccurate in describing the location of the femoral tunnel placement and lead to the non-anatomical positions. So what is better? Anatomical, definitely anatomical ACL, uh, ACL reconstruction is better because it provides a better rotational stability and sometimes we don't know, it decreases the risk of the osteoarthritis also. So first we go, uh, relook the anatomy of the ACL. If you see ACL is divided into two bundles, uh, anteromedial and the anterolateral one, each bundle is named after its tibial insertion site on the like anteromedial and posterolateral. The anteromedial and the posterolateral differ in their length, width and the insertional area. In every aspect, anteromedial bundle is uh, larger and wider than the posterolateral bundle. So if we go through the uh, tibial attachment, it is always very variable. Sometimes you see the anteromedial and the posterolateral bundle, they are just uh, behind to each, uh, anterior or posterior to each other, or sometimes they become uh, so much parallel to each other. So it is not always like uh, uh, the anatomy will be same at every, for every knee. It will be different. So we have to choose, but still we have to choose some point because not in every case we can get the proper footprint of the ACL. So there will be some point, uh, we have to choose some landmarks. So this is the anterior margin of the PCL. These are the studies which have shown like how much anterior we can take our tunnel in the sagittal plane from the uh, PCL. The other landmark is the lateral meniscus. So the posterior edge of the anterior horn of uh, lateral meniscus, normally we, uh, we draw a tangential line along, to the, uh, along with the posterior margin and we uh, normally believe that it is just anterior to that tangential line. The other landmark is the tibial spine. So it is if you uh, draw a, a line from the most prominent part of the medial tibial spine, the normally your uh, center of the tibial tunnel should be 4 to 5 mm anterior to that. So uh, is it like the single landmark can be uh, correct? No. Anterior horn of the lateral meniscus, it is a very uh, easy landmark that we can just see uh, while scoping uh, uh, the knee joint through the anterolateral portal. But it, still you can see every time the, uh, this anti uh, the anterior root of the lateral meniscus, it is in the different knee, it is uh, again in the different position. Sometime it is very near to the ACL, sometime it is very far away from the uh, ACL footprint. So it is always like a single landmark, a sing on a single landmark, we cannot believe. Okay. The, uh, the center of the ACL tibial attachment is almost uh, 9 to 10 mm behind the posterior edge of the intermeniscal ligament and the center of the ACL tibial attachment is uh, almost 5 to 6 mm anterior from the projected line from the peak of the tibial spine. So uh, as taking all these landmarks into your consideration, you can just make a point if suppose uh, the footprint of the uh, tibial attachment of the ACL is not present over there. So some of the radiographic methods are also available, MS and Jacob line, that is the line parallel to the medial tibial plateau or the Stabile or the Rushing's line, uh, that is the line perpendicular to the tibial axis. Both the aim center bundle is almost at the 30% which we count from the anterior side and the posterior lateral bundle is present on the 40 to 50% of the uh, distance if we count from the, again on the anterior, from the anterior side. Now we come to the femoral attachment, it is more consistent. If you see, this is, uh, this I have told already, suppose if you are considering this, this one is the, uh, this one is the po uh, posterior part, this one is the anterior part, this one is the distal one and this one is the proximal one. So we, in our terminology, we normally call it as a shallow, this one is the deep, this is the high, this is the low. This one is the intercondylar ridge, which is uh, again for every orthoscopy surgeon, you should be able to identify the intercondylar ridge. Okay, so this is the uh, pictorial diagram. So if you see that, this is the intercondylar uh, ridge. This is bifurcation ridge, but uh, I doubt like uh, in every case you won't be able to see this. Okay, so uh, 
just uh, proximal to this is the anteromedial bundle and uh, posterior to that is the posterior lateral bundle. Okay, so what are the useful landmarks which you can use uh, identifying the uh, femoral footprint? The femoral, if you are very lucky, you will definitely find the femoral ACL stump over there. Second is the resident ridge, that is the intercondylar ridge. Uh, best visualization, you can just, uh, when, whenever you are marking the, your entry point, you can go through the anteromedial portal or you can just first mark while seeing from the anterolateral portal and you can go again to the anteromedial portal and check your position. And if you have uh, that facility of 70, using the 70 degree scope, that is again useful. The other methods which you can use is the ruler method that's already been described. Like if you uh, keep a ruler from the uh, uh, most uh, di uh, distal part to the proximal part and you can just in between to that, you can mark your point. So this method you can also use. But every time you should check from the anteromedial portal. This is again some of the radiographic method uh, described by the Bernard and the Hurtle and the other, uh, these authors. But, uh, but only, th only thing is that just now uh, that Iru, uh, I think uh, Iru Shishima, uh, he has come with a paper in uh, 2017 that this Blumen sets line also have a classification. It is not uh, that straight in every, of, uh, in every knee. Sometime it is straight, sometime it is uh, that uh, small uh, uh, bump, is, uh, small hill area is there and sometime there is, will be a large hill area. So Blumen side sets line is not always a straight one. So these methods are difficult to rely. Again, the si similar the quadrant methods that we, you can use in, uh, in, the, in if you, uh, uh, sorry, calculate these quadrants, this is, you calculate from the, this one part, the deep to shallow one and, uh, and from the high to lower end. Okay, so whenever you are uh, just seeing from the, uh, your lateral portal, so uh, by, uh, whenever you are uh, just having this picture, just remember you need not to go on the red area. The green area is good for, the, uh, for making your tunnels. So in summary, ACL center, that is what the 43% of the proximal to distal length of the lateral femoral intercondylar notch wall and femoral socket radius that is around 2.5 mm anterior to the posterior articular margin. The anteromedial center normally that is the 29% of the proximal to distal length of the lateral intercondylar notch and the posterior lateral center 50% of the proximal to distal length of the lateral femoral intercondylar notch. Okay, from the, post from the posterior to anterior the AM bundle appears slightly anterior to the posterior lateral bundle and both the bundles appear uh, socket radius. This, uh, you should always remember that the fro uh, from the posterior cartilage margin, you should uh, always have a two, 2 to 2.5 mm of the bony margin. Okay, so the femoral tunnel position, you should remember this jingle. This is actually a ideal. So you should remember this is, uh, it should be more isometric. Uh, you should more focus on the direct fibers of the ACL. I will just tell you in the next slide what are the direct fibers. Uh, it should be eccentric, it should be more anatomic, and it should be uh, which provides the less tension to the graph. So that is midway between the PCL and the lateral femoral condyle articular cartilage, and there should be a margin of 1 mm on the posterior wall. Okay, so if you see this picture, so just imagine this uh, femur is at, uh, the knee is flexed at the 90 degree, femur is just on the, uh, your table. So this is, uh, so I have cleared this. So this one again, this is the higher, uh, this is the deeper position, this is the shallow one, this is the lower end, and this one is the higher position. Okay, so what are the direct and the indirect fibers? So if you uh, go through the uh, uh, ACL uh, femoral attachment, so this area normally, which is more closer to the uh, intercondylar ridge, it, uh, the ACL attaches with the direct fibers. But on the posterior side, where on the posterior articular margin, the ACL attaches to the lateral femoral condyle with the indirect fibers. So those are the weaker fibers. So we have to focus more on the direct one, this one. 
So this should be your ideal entry point. So you can uh, make your entry with the owl also, like this, and then you can go to your enteromedial portal and you can check your entry. Uh, sometimes what you can do, uh, uh, what I norm, sometimes what I do, I just take a uh, reamer and then I just uh, just uh, dra uh, just push it uh, till the your entry point and you can check that uh, how the diameter will come and how much margin you are having on the posterior side. So uh, to make it more simple for the femoral tunnel, the tunnel center should be 40% from the proximal to the distal distance of the lateral notch. It should be centered between the lateral intercondylar ridge and the posterior articular margin. This is a simple point. I have made it uh, somewhat simple. This point you can remember while making the femoral tunnel. Center of the ACL coincide with the, uh, coincide with the distance of approximately 2.5 mm plus plant tunnel radius. Remember, it's not the diameter, it is the radius. Like if you are having a diam uh, uh, graph diameter of 8, you have to just add uh, 4 plus 2.5. From the posterior, arti uh, posterior articular margin, tunnel center should be centered over the lateral bifurcate ridge. Okay, this is not the lateral intercondylar ridge. This is the lateral bifurcate ridge. Now we come to the tibia. So tibia, if you are lucky, you will get a proper uh, this thing, and most of the time you will get the proper uh, uh, ACL attachment over there. You can measure that in the sagittal plane and the horizontal plane, and then you can decide your entry point. Or if you are having a good stump, you can just in the center of the stump you can place your jig, and you can make your t uh, entry. Again, for simplicity of the TBL tunnel, the center of the TBL tunnel should be located 40% from the medial to lateral width of the interspinous distance, and center should be in line with the posterior edge of anterior horn of lateral meniscus. Again, I'm telling you, you have to consider three, four landmarks at, uh, for tibia and femur, femoral tunnel. Tunnel center should be 7 mm anterior to the PCL notch or the posterior fovea. The, uh, because, why it is important? Because then uh, the chances of the impingement uh, uh, from the uh, intercondylar notch will be less. The tib uh, tibial guide mostly kept at the 55 degree. This is I'm talking about the external, how you have to keep the jig from on the external side where you have made the incision and you have harvested your graft. So the tibial guide mostly you keep it at the 55 degree position with the, aiming the tip of the intra-articularly at the center of the ACL footprint extra articularly the guide should be set to the center of the tunnel is 1.5 to uh, 1.5 to 2 cm medial to the tibial tubercle okay and 1 cm above the insertion of the hamstring so from the tibial tuberosity you can just keep a distance of roughly one finger width or more than that and uh, again from the hamstring attachment you can keep a distance of one finger width so if you come to the radiological assessment, suppose if you have done the surgery and you want to assess your, I think there are some points, like if you have to uh, choose the uh, choose the tibial, uh, you want to assess your tibial tunnel and the femoral tunnel. So there are some points like the femoral tunnel, if you are able to mark it, it should not, uh, it should not be more than, a, uh, more than 40, 45 degree uh, in the vertical plane. So it should be around 50, uh, 40 to 50 degree around the femoral tunnel. Okay, so this you measure from the horizontal, the femoral tunnel. And the tibial tunnel, tibial tunnel should not be more than 70 degree. In the, if you are seeing a coronal, ex, uh, this AP anterior posterior x-ray. So this, uh, in this way you can measure that. So this angle alpha, it should not be more than 70 degree. Otherwise your tunnel will be more vertical. Or this angle beta, it should not be more than 40 to 45 degree. In the sagittal, uh, in the lateral x-ray or in the sagittal plane, you can uh, again assess your uh, tunnels. 
like in, if you see, this is the rough idea, if you uh, just draw a Blumen set line, so your tunnel entry should be in the one third, proximal one third part of the Blumen set for the femur. And for the tibia, if you extend this Blumen set line, so the, your tibial and the intraarticular entry of the tibial tunnel should be posterior to the extension of the Blumen set line. So there won't be any impingement like this. Okay? So this you can get a rough idea of that. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Um, now that we have all the necessary concepts and ideas in an ACL reconstruction su surgery in bits and pieces in our heads, uh, the next step would be to amalgamate all the concepts in ACL reconstruction uh, that we have learned so far. We will now go through a series of relive surgeries to do so. This would serve as a good revision of all the concepts and help visualize the ACL reconstruction surgery as a bigger picture. I now invite on stage uh, Dr. Abhishek Ghatge to take us through ACL reconstruction using a hamstring graft. Welcome, sir. So good afternoon to all of you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ashe, for the invitation. And kudos to your whole the organizing team for such a wonderfully crafted session. So I will be talking on uh, real-life surgery. Just to give a short information on the patient, this is a uh, patient, uh, young patient, and he's having ACL tear on the left knee. So what are your So what you are seeing is a knee which is left knee and my preferred technique is just like a TKR position where I keep the knee on the table in 90 degree with a lateral post and a um, post at 90 degree to keep the knee at 90 degree. So first, first and foremost thing to start a surgery is examination of the knee in anesthesia. Just to confirm what you have diagnosed in the operating or in your OPD, just to confirm the findings that you need to do an anterior drawer test, latchman test, assess the amount of pivoting you have. In this way, you confirm the diagnosis and this helps in planning your surgery. Then graft harvest. My most preferred technique is a hamstrings graft. Uh, for all harvest technique, for, uh, for harvesting, just uh, have a marking of the anatomical landmarks already have been discussed a lot in detail by previous speakers. So after marking the anatomical landmarks, you mark a harvest uh, a intended point of uh, incision. You can take a vertical or you can take a oblique incision, it is up to you. Then after subcutaneous dissection, just see this uh, pes fascia, sartorius fascia. You feel both the tendons, semi-T and grassless. The thing more tubular structure you feel is a grassless. Semi-T has, has a more flat fan-shaped insertion. Then with a blunt dissection, dissect out the fatty tissue under, underneath the fascia and with a mixture on a 90 degree retractor, take the semi-T out then mark it with your ethibon or a um, uh, non-absorbable suture. With a blunt finger dissection, what I do is I identify the vinculas. Couple of vinculas you find, many a times in aberrant cases you can find an additional third vincula in the same ET. Then before inserting your tendon stripper, just make sure that you are having an elastic recoil of the same ET. Then only you insert this, uh, your uh, tendon stripper. You can use an open tendon or a closed tendon stripper, depending upon your expertise and your preferred technique. So in this case, uh, I have shown an open tendon stripper where I didn't took out the tibial insertion. Then after taking out the semi T tendon, always assess the Always assess the integrity of whole length of tendon. 
see that you have not accidentally amputated the tip of the te tendon because in that case the length of the graft intended length of the graft for uh, acl will be less and depending upon the uh, diameter of the tendon semi t you try to harvest grassless if it is very thin or if you are preferred preferring five or six tendon graft So after uh, harvesting the graft, simply do a whip stitches of the both ends. Uh, this is a uh, this is a four strand graft. So simply uh, do a whip stitches using number five ethimon, and then assess the diameter and the length of the tendon. Then here you can see this is a six strands graft where uh, there is a four strand of semi t and two strands of grassless. then using your graft sizer assess the um, diameter of the graft it should go very easily without any amount of graft in the uh, graft sizer's uh, loop or the play groove where the threads are which are made for to passing the threads then next we start with an arthroscopy arthroscopy you have a for a planning the acl the entry portal on the lateral anterolateral portal will be a bit higher portal we call it birds eye portal and the anteromedial portal will be a bit lower one and bit medial one i take a horizontal incision for a anteromedial portal because this helps me in uh, widening the incision in in the femoral over drilling and in in a 90 degree position and insert um, insert your number 18 gauze spinal needle from anteromedial portal see for the ass accessibility of your posterior part of the notch where your intended femoral tunnel uh, tunnel will be there in this way in this way you can easily reach the posterior part of the posterior part of the femoral tunnel then just to have a quick diagnostic round look for any meniscal pathologies and look for the acl stump the acl stump needs to be shaven off to prevent the graft impingement but try to preserve the remnant attachment of the acl try to do as more must more biological without hampering the <coughs> isometricity of the acl then for making the tunnel if you go with a go in 90 degree you it will find difficulty in reaching the posterior part of the notch but when you flex you can easily assess the anatomical landmark of acl see in this i have flexed it to 120 degree and then easily go to the posterior part of the notch where the anatomical footprint of the acl on femoral side lies there are two techniques where you can plan your um, rather there are three techniques one is outside in technique and the two technique the inside out technique you can use your owl or a k wire to make a pilot hole or you can use a, you can use an offset guide i use usually a 2 mm k wire so i this k wire i tap it uh, to create a pilot hole and after creating the pilot hole i insert my bit pin over this hole and just check it after entering the bit pin that whether i am anatomical or not and after entering the bit pin to both the cortex then over drill the bit pin with a 4.5 mm reamer this is usually decided by the uh, type of button you use some buttons have 5 mm some button 4.7 so that your implant guy will guide you which type of reamer you use then measure the length of the tunnel if you are anatomical your tunnel will be falling between 30 to 40 mm depending upon the type of the patient type of the bony build then uh, after measuring the size insert your bit pin and over the bit pin insert your flower tip reamer but here their key point is you can see my scope is pointing towards medial side in this way i can ensure that while entering the flower tip most commonly you encounter is while entering is a scuffing of the medial femoral condyle cartilage so in this way you can avoid scuffing of the medial femoral condyle 
so just keep your uh, scope direction towards medial side G enter slowly your uh, uh, flower tip reamer sorry what happened We are back. So now slowly turn your scope direction towards your intended tunnel and then slowly over rim it. How much to over rim? If you are using an adjustable loop button and you intend to put a graft of around 18 to 20 mm inside the femoral tunnel, then 4, four to 5 mm of over drilling is enough. But if you are using a fixed loop button, you have to calculate depending upon the type of graft you use and type of uh, button you use. So I am demonstrating here is an adjustable loop button. It is very easy to calculate for the beginners. So it is better for you. Adjustable loop buttons, uh, just more than um, around 5 mm plus your adjustable loop button 5 mm plus your intended um, uh, length of graft you need to put like 20 mm I need to put inside the femoral tunnel so I will over drill it with a 25 mm so for over while over drilling have patience go slowly if you find bone debris wash it out then again start over drilling don't over drill in blind way in order to damage to your lateral femoral cortex after over drilling look for your tunnel placement it, it is sometimes difficult from your entrolateral portal so don't hesitate to switch the portal and look for the integrity of the posterior wall inferior wall and look for the lateral wall uh, lateral wall sometimes you feel this uh, fibers coming inside the tunnel which will hamper with the insertion of your graft so you need to shave out this uh, fibers now coming to the TBL side, TBL side go uh, anatomically come your tunnel should be coming in the line of your lateral uh, mel lateral meniscus anterior horn posterior border. So this is a lateral meniscus, this is posterior border of uh, anterior horn of lateral meniscus. So your tunnel will be go coming in line with this uh, posterior border around 40% uh, more medial as compared to this dead center just to avoid damage to your anterior root of lateral meniscus. So this will be your entry point. You can use a tip aimer like this one or you can use a ring aimer just shown before previously or you can use an elbow aimer type of aimer you can decide but the most important part is to be in the proper anatomical site of your entry. Then once you enter with your bit pin the degree of uh, uh, degree is usually 55 degree we, we keep but if you find your graft is very small like 70 mm or 60 or 70 mm graft prefer to go with a 50 degree of your aimer just to avoid adequate coverage of the graft in the femoral side then after entering uh, after uh, drilling with a bead pin over drill it with a required amount of uh, uh, over drill with a required amount of reamer then with a shaver gently shave off this fibers avoiding the intact part of the ACL just to avoid impingement while graft passage. After preparing the tunnels just uh, you have to put a uh, loop suture through the femoral tunnel and 
pull this loop suture from your TBL side. In this way, there is a uh, loop suture from femur to tibia covering both the tunnels. Now, graft preparation. I will be discussing about the adjustable loop button. So this is the adjustable loop button. You have to do a two marking. One marking will be on the button. This marking is on the button. It is amount, either this is the length of the femoral tunnel. You measure it uh, beforehand and that length is calculated from the distal end of the button to the loop. So this is amount, this is the amount of the loop which will go inside the femur before flipping the button over the lateral femoral cortex. This will be the one, mar one marking and uh, another marking will be on the graft. This is the amount of the amount of the graft you need to put inside the So second mark marking will be in the graph on the graph. This will be the amount of the graft you need to put inside your femoral tunnel. Then I always used to uh, tie the graft over here with a Y grill just to have a colored marking if accidentally this ink marking washes off in the with the NS. Then next step is the graft passage. Every button has its own pulling thread. So you have to pull your uh, button with this pulling thread. Uh, like this, this button has a purple colored pulling thread. So pull your pulling thread till the marking on the loop comes at the edge of the femoral tunnel. So once the marking is on the edge of the femoral tunnel, the button goes. Now the marking is going slowly. Then once it is in the edge of the femoral tunnel, gently give a traction from the TBL side and assess that whether your button is flipped. And after flipping the button, reduce the loop using the reduction suture, uh, reduction uh, threads. You have to cinch the graft and go very gentle while cinching such that you don't over cinch the graft. And this will be the marking of the Y krill which needs to go from go up to the edge of the femoral femoral tunnel in between cinching you just try to pull it back sometimes what happens is the button cinch uh, button cinches but it again gets loosened up so after cinching have a uh, 10 to 10, 20 cycles of cycling and then fix your button using an interference screw. So the if you are using a bio screw like this, go one size up and knee in 30 degree of flexion. Then assess the integrity of the, assess the strength of the graft, laxity of the graft. If you find any laxity, you can again cinch it, make it a good tight graft. And then you need to do a, assess the impingement of the graft in the notch go a gentle uh, extension and look into the notch. So here you can see on gentle extension the graft should not impinge on the roof on the lateral border of femoral condyle and whole of the graft should come inside the notch. Sometimes you can find here a cyclops lesion which can imp we can have a post-op flexion deformity. So you have to shave it. Many times it is hidden under the intermeniscal ligament. So when you do this, you can assess it. So that is how you complete your surgery. Thank you.